When life throws you lemons, they say Make a YouTube channel, grab your God-free lemonade In the depths of the dark, where shadows dance and sway A satanic gospel, a twist in the charade Hi everyone, it's that time of the year again where we get to do another Jack Chick track. So let's get started. Yay. As usual, you don't have to look at the screen as I'll be describing what we see. And it's probably for the better that you don't have to see exactly what Jack Chick is saying. So this one is called The Little Princess and it looks like it's a kid dressed up to go trick or treating, but she doesn't look really thrilled about it. Let's find out what this is about. So in our first couple panels, we see this little girl is really skinny and at the doctor's office. The doctor says, no, oh, one more deep breath. Uh, honey, I need to talk to your mom alone. And the next one we see the mother is uh, crying. I'm not gonna clock her for her hairdo. I mean, her kid's sick, so. The doctor says, Mrs. Spencer, Heidi is dying fast. She may not last more than a couple of weeks. Later that night, Mom, Daddy, am I gonna die soon? And the dad says, We're so sorry, little princess, but you are. Now we see Heidi, she's pretty sick looking. She looks like she's hooked up to an oxygen tank. Real, real skinny. And she says, There's one thing I really wanna do before I die. Can I please go trick or treating on Halloween? And the mom's kind of tearing up. She doesn't actually look too thrilled. Like, oh, this is this is her last request. This is kind of lame, <laughs> you know. And the dad is he looks more sympathetic and he says, "Well, if you have the strength, honey, you can." Uh, d Daddy, what will happen to me after I die? Honestly, I don't know, princess. I don't think anybody does. There's some boy, I don't, I, I'm assuming it's a brother? I don't know, he's just in the house. And he says, What are you going as, Heidi? A princess. Uh, I should have guessed it. And then now on Halloween night, she's, uh, looks like she's huffing. But, I mean, she's, she's taking in her oxygen, but surely she's going to take her oxygen tank with her, right? Come on, Heidi, we don't have all night. Hold on, I'm coming. Now they're trick-or-treating, getting some treats. We got a nice happy jack-o'-lantern here. Trick-or-treat! And the old lady says, oh, what a beautiful little princess. Oh, man. Now they're on the, the sidewalk. She collapses. Candy's everywhere. This is a pretty dramatic scene. There's like a street lamp and I don't know. They did a nice job with this scene. And so the little kid is, Josh, help! And Josh picks her up and he says, that's it, we're going home. Josh, please, just one more house. Okay, but but that's it, But and then we're going home. I, I wanna go to our new neighbors, the Smiths. Please don't tell me she's going to either evangelize to the Smiths or be evangelized at by the Smiths. Or <laughs> the Smiths are gonna give her a chick tract because that is recommended by the chick.com uh, website for you to set, give these to kids during Halloween. So I guess uh, feel free to pause the video and, and post your guesses. My guess is I, I feel like she's, she has to go to the Smiths. So I'm assuming she's gonna go talk at the Smiths. We'll, we'll find out. Oh boy, <laughs> there's the chick track. Huh. Well, I, I mean, <sighs> trick or treat. And the lady says, here's some candy and a special treat. God bless you both. And the old man, Mr. Smith, that hey, little girl is in trouble. Oh, let's, let's go pray for her right now. And now later that evening, we see the silhouette in her room that she appears to be reading the track. So I guess she got to the last page because she says, Dear God, thank you for saving me. So it looks like that last part where it says, uh, 
you know, check off the box that this is the day you decided to admit that you're a sinner and have this prayer and so on. But what about mom, dad, and Josh? Mom, dad, come quick. And the parents are now in the bedroom. For some reason, the crown is on the bed. I just feel like that would be uncomfortable if she rolled over it. I've got to talk to the Smiths right now, she says, holding the chick tract. They gave me this little book. I know they'll come, Daddy. I must see them tonight before it's too late. And the dad's got this, I don't know, he's got a weird look on his face. He looks, he looks like he's been drinking. It's just, it's a weird look. I don't, it's, it's, it's also strange because I think that the artist did a pretty good job with the previous panel. Um, the one where she asked to go to trick or treating. And now the dad just looks like, like he's drunk and placating her. I'm like, oh, okay, princess, anything for you. So he goes and grabs him. Now, see, now the dad looks concerned. Now he doesn't look drunk. Uh, ex excuse me, I I'm George Spencer from across the street. Our daughter read your little book and would like to see you right away. She's dying. And so the Smiths say, you know, let's go, honey. And now they're in her bedroom. She's still hooked up to the oxygen and she's raised up her skinny little arms to say, I did it, I did it. I prayed the prayer in the book you gave me. I asked Jesus to be my savior. Now I have peace in my heart and I'm not afraid to die, she says with all of this medication near her. And I guess it's Mrs. Smith. That's great, Heidi. We're so happy for you. Thank you so much for caring about me. I wonder who the, this book is directed at because I thought it was for kids. This is one of them that is recommended to give out to older children, but this seems more like for the older people that are handing out the, the candy treats with the Chick Tract. It seems more like something comforting for them. Like, look, this is how your Chick Tract could impact a child's life. You never know who's coming to your door. Ha ha. It, it seems more for that audience as opposed to for children. And Heidi, as she's holding the hands of Mrs. Smith, you see, I, I only have a few days left to live. So if you hadn't given me that little book, I, I might have ended up in hell. And the parents are just like outside. The dad, I don't know, the dad's hand is shaking. He might be telling his wife like, no, just, just leave her alone. Just let her talk. Or he might be shaking like, wait, we're gonna end up in hell too. But now I'm going to heaven and everything's perfect, except for one thing. My mom and dad and Josh don't know any of this. Would you please share it with them? She's like crying, tears in her eyes. That's when dad steps in, good. <laughs> He's being an appropriate parent. And he says, hey, ha -ha, what's going on in here? Dad, remember when you said nobody knows what happens after you die? Well, these people know. And we get this reference to 1 John 5.13. These things I have written unto you, that you may know you have to eternal life. So, you know, this is what they believe is going to happen after you die, but to know, I... no. <laughs> I, I want you and Mom and Josh to listen to them, okay? And Dad's like, okay, honey. Again, this face... now this face is a bit confusing, but I think he is confused. So I'll, I'll give it to Jack that he had a, a strange look on the guy's face. Folks, it's no accident that Millie and I are here tonight. This is a divine appointment. God loves you so much. He sent us here with this most important message you'll ever hear. Mr. Spencer, I'm sure the thought of your daughter dying breaks your heart, right? Uh, of course. Well, God is an even more heartbroken when he sent his son on heaven to die on earth. Oh, you have... Oh, my God. Uh, this is horrible. Who, who is this book for? Is it, is it for cancer patients? Is it for their parents? Also, this looks like the house that, um, there, there, that guy that got out of prison. There was a chick tract about this guy that gets out of prison and he stays with his auntie and uncle and they push Jesus on him. It looks like it's that same house, but she's only got a few days left to live, right? And they're taking away these precious minutes that they have. So he can tell uh, that, well, God, see, you were hurting. Like, you're sad about your kid dying. God was, like, even more sad. So, yeah. <laughs> I mean, what's, what's the point of saying that? 
So God was even more heartbroken when he sent his son from heaven to die on earth. Great. Fantastic. We're having, um, you know, the sadness Olympics here. God's the winner. Gold, gold medal. Why did God have to do that? Because all people are sinners and God would never allow sin to enter heaven. This again is this weird belief that Jack Chick and Christians like him have. This idea that you're not Christian simply because you've never heard of it. And this is actually something Muslims believe as well. That if you read the Quran, you'll have no choice but to believe it. And I've read it twice. Uh, I guess it negated itself because I'm not a Muslim. <laughs> but for, for Jack, it's this idea that you're going to go to somebody's house and preach the gospel and they're going to say, why golly, I've never heard this before. Well, even though I've never heard it and you've provided zero evidence, I'm totally going to believe it. Yay, we're all saved. That's such a... I... <sighs> I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. It's, it's so simplistic in, in the approach. I don't know if Jack really believed it or if he felt like he had to believe it because otherwise his life's work, which is these simple tracks, um, would be for naught. So for all of sin and come short of the glory of God, Romans 3, 23. Now because of our sin, we all deserve hell. And they're in the living room talking to the Smiths and we see that the little girl is on the outside, like listening to them from the hallway, praying really, really hard. And they, he tells them the only way man could ever get into heaven was for someone sinless to die in his place and pay the penalty for his sin. Now, every time Jack writes this, I always wonder if he realizes how nonsensical this sounds to people who aren't Christian. That the only way for a perfect, all-powerful God to forgive us of sin that he created. He created the concept of sin. He created us to be the way that we are, which is inherently sinful, apparently. He created this whole system. And instead of just saying, you know what? Maybe uh, there's a better way to do this. I'm sorry, guys, I forgive you. And actually I shouldn't forgive you. You should forgive me for causing you this, this psychological frustration, you know, this, this, this hurt that you, just as you are born, are inherently evil and deserving of eternal torture. That's on me, my bad. Let's wipe the slate clean and get off to a, a, a you know, a good start. You know, let's get off on the right foot here. Instead of doing that, he forces himself into the womb of a 13 year old child so he can come out and be beaten, raise again, a day and a half later and then rise into heaven and that somehow absolves us of sin and not only does it absolve us of sin even though we still have sin and we'll still die for sin um that was the only way to fix the system and and and, and christians say this and they think it's a beautiful message they don't think it's bizarre they don't think it's it's nonsense they don't think their god is a monster they say this and they think it's beautiful. And I know that because I, I was part of it. I thought it was this wonderful sacrifice, but really it, it just didn't make any sense. I know we were supposed to feel bad and feel grateful for Jesus dying on the cross, but I always wondered why it had to be that way. Couldn't it be any other way? I mean, after all, he's God. So even as a Christian, I, you know, I was grateful for Jesus because I was told to be grateful for Jesus. I felt bad that I was so awful that Jesus had to come and die because I'm so terrible. I felt bad about that. I felt guilty for that. But I also wondered, couldn't there have been a different way to do it? Uh, so the mom says, well, who could that be? Because again, here in America, um, we've never heard of Jesus Christ. So we get this pretty nice drawing, a uh, silhouette of Jesus on the cross. That someone was God, the Son, Jesus Christ. And then Luke 23, 13, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. We get John 3, 16 thrown at us. And three days later, Jesus rose from the dead and returned to heaven. Wait a minute. You mean Jesus died for us? That's exactly right. If you will repent of your sins and trust him as your savior, you will have eternal life. Just like Heidi. Now this is extreme manipulation. Because now your daughter, who has converted on her literal deathbed, now she's going to hear 
you either say yes i totally believe it thus dying happy thinking she's going to see you in heaven or you have to tell her no honey this is not for me but let's say that you tell her okay sweetie we'll see you in heaven but she didn't really believe it and she dies now you're stuck with this concept of if i i really just want this to be true what if i just believe it or, or act like it's true because i really just want to see my daughter again this is such emotional manipulation that I I think that Jack Chick and his kind believe they're they're doing like the hard-hitting stories you know they're they're hitting us in in the realistic feelings and all of this but I I don't think he realizes exactly how manipulative this is and we see the the neighbor Mr. Smith smiling because he really thinks yeah I'm helping these people out but in reality, he's taking advantage of them to convert them to his religion under extreme emotional stress. So this is really just, ugh. So now they all pray. I'm not even going to read it. And five minutes later, Mrs. Smith goes to Heidi. Heidi, they did it. Oh, thank you, God. Later that night, she dies. Not She didn't even get a few days. So the last bits of her life were taken away from her spending time with her family because of this nonsense. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. So well, I don't know if I would call her a saint. And now God is there and Jesus is there. I've seen, we've seen this before. We saw this uh, in the live stream. It's uh, again with the kids where the kids are running to God, who's the faceless ghost, Jesus, who's pretty close cropped, and then like the, the Holy Spirit dove What's the, I need a voice for God and I need a voice for Jesus. Welcome home, child. You will live in heaven with us forever. And someday your whole family will join us, says Jesus. I always give Jesus a silly voice. Also, he's got, he's got stigmata in heaven. Really, you went to heaven and you couldn't even like heal your oozing wounds. Nasty. You're nasty, Jesus. Nasty. That's disgusting. Nobody wants to see that. Can you imagine you're in your mansion, you're having your beautiful food that you just get to eat because it tastes good, and Jesus shows up with his oozing wounds, and he's like, hey, what's up? Don't worry. Gangrene can't kill you in heaven. Drip, drip all over your delicious souffle. Nasty. You're nasty, Jesus. Fix that. So now the brother is putting a little crown on on a headstone that says Heidi Spencer, our little princess, 1991 and 1998, gross, she's seven. And Josh, the brother says, my little sister is in heaven because she trusted Jesus. And then we get the box, what about you? You'll never know when you'll end up here, then it will be too late. The Bible says there's only one way to heaven and it's the same page we've seen forever. I really don't know what else there is to say. Um, that was pretty awful. It, it went in a direction that I didn't want to see, but kind of expected to see. And it's, it's just emotional manipulation. And I'm sure any of us who's been in a situation where we had a loved one dying or pass on completely, that there were well-meaning quote-unquote Christians trying to tell us, oh, it's okay, um, you can see them in heaven as long as you convert to Christianity. And it's like, don't you think I would love to believe that? But I just can't, what you're telling me isn't convincing. It's just manipulative and it's hurtful. And it just makes me feel like I'm never gonna see this person again. It doesn't make me feel like there's hope. You make me feel like you're just reminding me that they're dead. That's, that's really all that's happening. And in fact, when, uh, when my sister passed away, there was a person who kept posting this, kind of badgering me until I had to, to block this account, saying stuff like, you know, your sister would really love to see you in heaven. Why don't you come back to Christianity? And it was just more iterations of the same. And it was, it was still so fresh that I really wanted to punch the screen when I read it because of course I would love to have that belief. I don't need you, strange man in the internet, to twist the knife to make me, to remind me that, by the way, you used to believe this. But once you get through that belief, that 
that threshold of I no longer can support this belief. I no longer believe it. Once you get through that threshold, I, I don't know if there's ever a going back. And if there is, it's going to be a lot more evidence than, hey, wouldn't you love to see your freshly dead sister again? I, I really get upset when I see this stuff because it's, it's disgusting. And they think they're doing the right thing, the most loving thing, to remind you that Jesus loves you as if you, as if you've never heard this 20,000 times, as if you hadn't said it yourself before, as if it hadn't crossed your mind. Wouldn't it be nice if I could see this person again? Boy, you know, it'd be great if there was a heaven. But just to, to have people tell you this, I, it's, it's gross. I don't even know if it's emotionally manipulative. I think it's more like, like just taking psychic damage, you know, just to use like a gaming term. It's, it's just, it's, it's just psychic damage. That's all it is. It's, it's not loving. It's, it's cruel because it's basically kind of saying you will never believe again, at least not now. And that is a reminder that this person is dead forever. And even if there is a God, and you can't believe in that God because I have, I surely haven't provided you any evidence. Uh, you're just going to burn in hell. So middle finger, middle finger. That's really how it comes off Christians. Just so you know, that's how it comes off because you're not providing us any bridge to get back to belief. And that bridge is evidence. You're not providing any of that. You're almost taunting like, ha ha ha. I get to see your sister in heaven. That's, and that's what the person even said. You know, what am I supposed to tell your sister when I see her that you're here burning in hell because you didn't listen when I posted these comments? I mean, what a, what a good Christian. Anyway, hopefully any Christians watching this will understand where this is so inappropriate. Unless you are willing to have a serious conversation about not only faith, but why people leave the religion and what they they need to in order to believe again you know what kind of information evidence etc they would need to come back again it's really inappropriate to just throw it in their face and just say well i get to see them again <laughs> you're just gonna be burning in hell why why would you say that to somebody who just suffered a loss you're gross you're disgusting on that note if you guys have any feelings about it you can see i have some <laughs> kind of strong feelings about it um Love to hear what you guys have to say. Feel free to dump, sorry, feel free to dump um, if you have any, you know, personal experience with it. That was very frustrating. This is the place to vent. And otherwise, uh, you guys can always join us on Patreon for as little as a dollar a month. You get access to some cool stuff and a live stream that's, uh, that we have once a month. And also uh, just join the Discord. You don't have to pay for that. Um, you know, we can also have free members um, on Patreon as well. And you get some perks with that. So yeah, love to see you guys there. Love to see you in the comments. And as always, thanks for listening. Happy Halloween. In this unholy chapel, hear the whispers of the night where demons sing praises with voices deep.